Hi, everyone. This is Miranda with the Valuable Voices podcast. I have my friend Jenna here. I'm so excited for you guys to hear her story. We were trying to think how we met. I know a friend of mine um, introduced us, and I remember meeting in a coffee shop and just being like, kind of just blown away by you. I know you homeschooled your kids, you're a teacher, you're a coach, and just so many things. So you, you've been an inspiration to me since the day we met. So thanks for being here. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I feel the same about you. So that's fun when God connects um, powerful women of God who love Jesus and depend on him. Totally. Yes. It's been great to reconnect too, just in the past few, few weeks or months. So yeah. All right, girl. Well, again, I know there's so much inside of you and we can kind of see where this goes, but I'd love for you to touch on um, just kind of what we talked about, how like you may have been the planner, right? You may have like organized your day and had all the things and now, now that's changed. So talk to us about that. <laughs> yes. It's changed significantly. Um, so just to give a little backdrop um, on who I am and what I was like and what I'm like now, um, I absolutely used to be type A planner, color-coded. I mean, I had every hour of my day planned. Even if I was going to do nothing, I would plan and say, this is free time. Yeah. Um, super intentional. And I had a huge capacity for... I would have called it productivity then. Um, now I would probably call it, I had a huge capacity to toil endlessly in labor. Um, I got a lot done, but I always had a lot left undone. Yeah. And long story short, um, you know, I was always a person that tried to achieve, tried to get done. I felt like if I didn't do it, no one would. I was the oldest growing up. Mm -hmm. um, so I just took on some of those oldest child tendencies. Um, you know, my parents were young and they were working and they didn't have a lot of money. And so if I wanted to go to college, it was up to me. Anything, I was told the message, I think a lot of people my age, which is you can be anything you want to be, but you have to work for it. Yeah. And so that's what I did is I learned to work. Um, four things. And at one point, for example, um, I was teaching full time, going to grad school, tutoring on the side and doing freelance writing. And I'm thinking, how did I even do that? I don't know. <laughs> um, but there was a cycle that perpetuated. It seemed that I always had a goal that wasn't met yet. Mm -hmm. And the, the burden that I took on got heavier and heavier. Well, add, I got married, add, I had two kids back to back and I was, I became a big ball of stress. Yeah. Um, and to be really honest, I got to a point where I couldn't even do my job without medication. Now this was legal medication. I was diagnosed with ADD but I tried to be unmedicated most of my life. I got to the point where I thought if I don't have the ADD medication, I can't even get everything done anymore. But of course I took it. I tried to take on more and I continued to just have more than to do. Mm -hmm. So in my life, the hardest thing that ever happened to me became simultaneously the best thing that ever happened to me because, um, in 2019, my now ex-husband left and it was the divorce that you don't see coming. Most people don't get married thinking, okay, 10 years down the road, we are going to end this thing in a divorce. Let's make the best of the 10 that we got. Right. It doesn't happen that way. So um, my kids were young. They were two and four. I was working. Um, I'm, I'm like, I wonder if any of my previous employers would ever watch this. I was working a very, I was uh, working a, a very demanding job, I'll say, and um, up to 70 hours a week traveling. And wow. I, I finally had a reason to crash. Yeah. I had a reason to crash because I realized there's nothing left of Jenna to give. Wow. I don't have more time. I don't have more energy because single mom overnight, two-year-old, four-year-old can't do that job, didn't have money for daycare ended up having to quit that job, lost my house. Um, essentially my whole world fell apart and it felt like death yeah. because it was, it, it was death 
to an old lifestyle, death to an old way of thinking where I thought Jenna was the source. I was a Christian. I would say I believe in God. I would pray to him to help me. But at the end of the day, my source was pretty much me. Sure. I met the end of myself. And in that, I said, God, you know, you have this promise in your word that says your burden is light. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what that means. I've never experienced it. I question if it's true, but since you're God and you don't lie, it must be true. (laughs) If there's like ever a time that I need to experience that, that truth, it's now because I feel like I'm literally getting crushed under the weight of everything that just collapsed in my life. Yeah. And, um, and, and so that began my journey of becoming, um, a person who stopped being productive as the world would call it through toiling and source as self Mm -hmm. to learn how to be fruitful as defined by how the kingdom of heaven defines success. And that looked like letting Jesus take the lead. It looked like learning to work from rest and it looked like letting go of, I'm not saying to be organized is bad. It's, it's, right. it's not bad, but right. I relied on my color code and my schedule more than I relied on God. And so he essentially turned off. I think he turned off all my abilities, honestly, <laughs> to function the way that I used to, because he wanted me to, to learn. <laughs> Probably not I, funny to you. <laughs> It kind of is looking back because yeah. <laughs> I just look like a complete mess. It's like without my markers and my calendar, I didn't know how to function without being able to predict what I was going to do and manage. I mean, really it was about control. Totally. Um, totally. And I, I didn't, I didn't want all of that control. I didn't even want all that responsibility, but I felt trapped. And I think a lot of people probably can relate with that feeling and, yeah. It's not that I want everyone's life to fall apart to get free from it. But the point is, um, there is a freedom. His, ver- his verse, his promise is true that his burden, his weight is light. But it really does mean letting go of the world's ways, mm-hmm. expectations, um, and, and, and kind of just starting scratch from being a new creation, following his lead. And I'll, I'll wrap this part up with this verse. Um, I pray this every day that a man can make his plans, but it is the Lord who directs his steps. And I pray that every day. I'm like, God, you know, I'm, I'm still a planner. I'm still a prof- I, I still envision a lot of things, but now I'm like, Lord, you direct my steps because my plans are still big. Yeah. And my to-do list, if I had one, I mean, I partially have some, they're, they're still too big, but I know that God is not going to put on my plate in one day more than I'm actually meant to do. So if I start feeling that pressure and overwhelmed, I'm like, Ooh, I'm trying to do Jenna's thing instead of God. So I just have to recenter and anchor myself again. What's important to you today, God? Yeah, that is so good. I love everything about it. And I know there's many, many people that can relate to that. We're controlling our calendars. We're, we have our phone that tells us what to do. Oh my gosh, distractions pop up. I mean, yeah, because how else do you function, right? Like, <laughs> I mean, we work, we have kids, we have all those things and your schedule just kind of determines your day. Or you get to decide, you know what, I'm going to take control of this with God and he's going to help me and step through this. And you don't need a divorce I mean, that's amazing, right? Honestly, I think you can look back and say how blessed walking through it and what, and what I've, I've heard you say. Nobody wants that pain or that hurt, but gosh, what a cool thing that he's doing with you, right? So now what, what do your days look like without your highlighters and without your calendar? <laughs> well, I just cleaned up the table that's behind me so that you wouldn't see the reality of what my messy table looks like. Um, but I'm still in process. I would not say I've arrived. Um, but God is slowly giving me little organizational tools back. Yeah. I finally started using a calendar again. Um, and, and it seems like such a funny thing. Like you need to get God's permission to use a calendar for me. Yeah. Because that calendar became an idol and it dictated my day instead of letting God do it. So yeah, he's, he's, 
in baby steps, giving me these organizational tools back to see if I can learn how to use them differently than yeah. how I used to use them. So uh, my day looks like I get up and I pray first. <laughs> I feel like if I don't pray, then I have no clue what I'm doing. I will just run around in circles. Yeah. Um, and what I had said earlier, I pray that prayer that he would direct my steps. Mm -hmm. And um, I have a whiteboard and I will jot down things either that come to mind, like you need to empty the container, right? Yeah. Like there's too many things floating around in there. I can't keep track of it all. So I'll write things down on my whiteboard. Um, I'll check my phone. I, I, I will schedule things in my phone. Like, oh, I have a podcast with Miranda today. Like yeah, that goes right. in my calendar. I don't right. want to miss that. <laughs> so, you know, I'll look in there, see what I have. Um, but during prayer, something will shift in me. Um, in prayer, usually it's prayer and worship combined. Yeah. Um, and on the days that I have my kids, that also involves uh, <laughs> a lot of multitasking, making breakfast and getting right. the homeschool day started. So, I'm still trying to find a rhythm, honestly. Yeah. Um, I, I I want it to feel a little bit more structured than it does, but God's mm -hmm. like, no, not yet. Just just follow me, Jenna. Right. Um, so I couldn't tell you from there. Every day looks different. What I do, um, I will find chunks of time. The biggest consistency is God in the morning, God at night, intentional yep. time with Him. I do stuff in between that involves sharing time toward my kids. If I have them, if I don't have them, those are my work days. Yeah. And I try to get the stuff done of life, all the adulting and work stuff. Yeah. Um, but you know, even if I make a plan, God said this to me uh, two years ago, he said, Jenna, I'm looking for the interruptible unstoppables. Mm. And he wants me to keep moving um, from rest. I start with him. I recognize he's my source. But as I'm going throughout my day, sometimes I'll get a little ping, like a little thought will like drop into my head and I'll be like, I think that's God. He's telling me something. And he might say, call this person, reach out yeah. to this person. Don't forget. I mean, he literally has given me reminders before, like, Hey, you forgot about this task. Do it. And yeah. I'm like, Oh my gosh, I, you're so practical. God, thank you right. for reminding <laughs> me of that task. So, um, yeah, it's, it's still a work in process. And Whenever I start to feel that temptation of, of being overwhelmed, and I call it a temptation because I refuse to agree with it, I'm not going to say I'm overwhelmed. There's a temptation for me to be overwhelmed. I can't be overwhelmed, though, when I am living my life rooted and grounded in Christ. It's impossible because what he did on the cross took all of that. So yeah. if I'm taking it on, I'm holding on to something that doesn't belong to me. So I have to go back to him and say, okay. In my weakness, your strength is made perfect. I'm really feeling my weakness right now. So I need to re-anchor. I re-anchor throughout my day whenever I start to feel something. And um, I mean, that just takes a few minutes sometimes. So just acknowledging, like, yeah. where's your strength? Kick it in. Yep. That's so good. And just in hearing you talk, I can imagine the old you, right? The scheduler, the stress and overwhelm. I mean, to me, it's like, I'm just running on a hamster wheel. I've been in that season of just running on a hamster wheel, like can't keep up, can't keep track and just feel, just feeling it right in your body and hearing you talk. I mean, I could listen to you all day. Like I just hear peace in your voice. And I just, so I imagine, and I'd like you to kind of comment on that. I imagine that's what you're feeling, right? You just seem so peaceful and just so open and obedient to whatever he has. Yeah. So when I go to the anchor place with him, yeah. peace. Yeah. When I don't go there, opposite of peace. Right. Uh, but, but I catch it right away because I know, I know that the word gives me a lot of wisdom and strategy. It says to take every thought captive. And so if a thought starts to come in my mind, that creates feelings of being unsettled or stressed or anxious. I know that's an opportunity to stop what I'm doing right away and deal with it because I'm not letting that thought run rampant in my mind because it'll, it'll do destruction. It doesn't belong in there. It's not from the kingdom of right. God. So I do a lot of mind renewal as just part of my lifestyle yeah. because I've, I've seen too much the damage of believing lies and agreeing mm -hmm. with lies. Um, so yeah, the result is a supernatural peace and, you know, God, 
he told me, he said, Jenna, I'm your CEO. He added another job title of who he is to me. And that helps, that helps me know that I'm not in this alone because it can feel that way. I'm homeschooling my kids um, by myself Mm -hmm. and I'm trying to learn how to be a mompreneur. How did they, how did they do that term? A mom, however it is, an entrepreneur who's also a mom who also happens to be a single mom, um, (laughs) trying to run my own business and do a partner podcast with someone and doing freelance work. I mean, I don't know how I do what I do when it gets to the end of the day. Um, and I don't even know how I keep it all straight. So, well, actually I do. It's, it's God. Right. Right. <laughs> like I said, he, he tells me what to do for the day. And I've learned that life is made up of a million little moments. Mm-hmm. It's all of these little baby steps that we take in a day. And I don't have to be in control of my steps, the way I used to think with the right. color coding and the planning. What I, what is mine to control and to manage is my thought process yeah. about how I get there about the steps. I know I'm going in a direction. I know I allow myself to be interruptible. And so if I start veering off or, and I pay attention to that discernment, if something feels off, I stop. I right. check in with God. Um, but I think learning how to think with the mind of Christ mm-hmm. makes all the difference because then all the pressure is not on me. I spend time with him. I'm in the word. He teaches me. And you know when it pops up at just the right moment? Yeah. If it's like on the inside of me, it's like, I didn't even know I knew that verse and I didn't even know it meant that, but Holy Spirit will reveal to me in the moment what I need to know. Right. I love it. So I love your website. I'm going to share that. If people want to get in touch with Jenna again, I just, I mean, I don't know all the things you're doing, but you have a lot inside of you and I, I feel like it's all coming. Um, follow her on Facebook. Her videos are amazing, but tell us what's next. I know you've done life coaching. I could see some courses in you. I mean, a book, you're such a great writer. Like what's next for you? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I ask God this, <laughs> I'm asking God the same thing. So what is next? God, um, I'm just taking my little baby steps every day. So, um, my website is, it's up, but it's pretty much every day, um, going through transformation yeah. because I'm launching into new things. And so yeah. I'm trying to update as I go. Um, podcasting is one thing. So I'm in the process of launching my own podcast. That's not up and running yet. Uh, but it is a podcast collective. So I am, I don't want to sit there and talk to myself um, and, and do monologuing. I just, I can't do that. But what I love is like what we're doing here. I love bringing other voices. So it's called voice up. And I think this is a time where um, the body of Christ needs to be heard, but there's a focus on truth. Um, but not just the truth that people call truth, but really they're judging others. I don't mean that. I mean the truth of Jesus that is balanced with grace and that is rooted in love and is biblical truth. It's truth as revealed through Jesus, the person of truth, the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth, that kind of truth. That's the kind of truth that transforms people, right? That sets them free. It says that um, Jesus Christ, he is the truth, the way and the life, and that if he has set you free, you are free indeed. So people that have truth in their mouth. Those are the people I want to bring onto the show. Let them share what God has done in them and through them, what he's revealing to them. Um, I believe it's time for the church to speak up on some key issues that maybe they haven't wanted touched in the past because it's been a little touchy. Um, I just think it's time for truth, Uh, not even opinions. Um, Testimonies are powerful. That's the truth of what God has done in and through a person. Yeah. Um, but there's certain stances that I think if we call ourselves a Christian, there's certain stances that we need to take because we're not supposed to be conformed to the ways of the world. And the world is really pushing its agenda mm-hmm. in a lot of areas. And um, I think we need to be a voice of yeah. truth and a voice for the voiceless. I'm really passionate about um, about pro-life and I'm really passionate about um, actually being a voice against the trafficking of children. 
Yeah. So um, I'm going to have, you know, partnerships with different non for profits and organizations who can come in and speak and create some awareness around some of the issues <laughs> that's facing our society today and help Christians understand, like, what is our responsibility? And then individually, what is our role? We're not all called to do all the things, right? Um, so I just want to create awareness and bring insight into that. So that's the podcasting stuff. Um, I have a podcast with a friend um, called Black and White, and we're calling it a truth cast. And so her and I are going to be really digging into that there. Um, and I'm writing, I'm writing, I'm coaching. I have courses that I want to release and all in God's timing in his way. I have no idea how it's all going to get done, honestly, but <laughs> somehow I move, yeah, I move forward and I look back and I go, something actually happened. Something. Yeah. Happened. I mean, just think a year ago where you were or probably a month ago and the progress yeah. you made. So yeah. Yeah. We can't do it all at once. Nope. Nope. Well, thank you so much. I just love your story. It's so inspiring. Oh my goodness. I love that. I could talk to you all day, but you know me, I like to make these short and sweet. So yeah, obviously we're pretty aligned. I mean, um, I just totally believe your story matters. Your voice is valuable and um, be careful the voices you're listening to because we can't trust all those voices out there. So just make sure you're listening to the one and only, right? Because that's, that's, um, He's our counselor and he's our guy and he's our CEO and all the things. So right. well, thank you so much, Jenna. I will point, point people to your website. And again, just we're going to keep an eye on you because I know a year from now, I can't even imagine what you got going. So thanks yeah. for being on here. Thank and have a blessed you. Day. Thanks so much, Miranda. Thanks. Yeah. Blessings to you all. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right.